we'll see Ben Roethlisberger and the Pittsburgh Steelers taking on Mac Jones and the New England Patriots. EA Sports coverage of the National Football League brings us to Western Pennsylvania and Heinz Field in the Steel City of Pittsburgh. Moments ago, a scene that's played here since 2004. Big Ben Roethlisberger greeted by this sold-out Heinz Field crowd. His Steelers getting set to match up with the New England Patriots. Here we go from Heinz Field as Chris Boswell tees it up and boots it away. And they'll let that one go as it skips through the back of the end zone for a touchback. So here come the Patriots now to take over on offense. They're led by their quarterback from the University of Alabama, Mac Jones. Mac Jones absolutely believed in himself coming out of high school. Went to Alabama despite the fact there were many high-profile quarterbacks already on the roster and blossomed into a Heisman Trophy candidate in his final season with 41 touchdowns and only four interceptions. Steady, consistent as a passer, doesn't have the biggest cannon for an arm, but can stretch the field and lay those passes in on the deep ball. And up to the 35 before they're able to knock him down. Ball up to the 35 now as they come up on first and 10. They'll run with a former member of the Crimson Tide, Damian Harris. And he's got it up over the 40 to the 41. He'll get a nice chunk there on the first down run, and it's second and four. A run with Harris out of the shotgun. And he'll be taken down, but not before he works it past the 50. How best to describe that one? I'd say right down Broadway on that run. A straight ahead running. I think that that might be something we see a lot of between the tackles today. Well, he's enjoying things so far here this afternoon. Sees a crease and bursts through it for a solid game. Operating out of Steeler territory now. Here's first and 10 at the 49-yard line. Now Jones. And he rifles one incomplete. They've given up a few first downs on this drive, but getting the incompletion there, that should give them something to build on and maybe turn the tide. To throw once more on second and 10. Jones. And they're going to have themselves another first down as the tackle's made at the Steelers' 32-yard line. Good job there to locate his tight end, Charles, in the middle of the field. Yeah, he has good pass-catching abilities, and if they're able to continue to find him here in the early going, I think it'll help out his teammates out on the perimeter. You can take the big shots later if he occupies their attention. And he'll maneuver his way forward for about four. Second and six. The run got four. Now they deal with a second and six. Throwing Jones. And he fires one incomplete. It certainly didn't appear that that's where he wanted to go with the ball initially, so he tried to get something out of it by dumping it off to his running back. Unsuccessful. Seventh play of the drive upcoming here on third and six. Back to throw. Jones. Complete. Hunter Henry with the grab. And he will have a Patriots first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. Pretty solid start for the rookie here on this first drive, Charles. Able to have some confidence, step it back into the pocket, move around a little bit, find open receivers, and deliver. That just means his confidence is going to continue to grow because he's getting more and more comfortable with each completed pass. Now a first down carry for Harris. And they work this near the five. He'll be stopped at the six. Well, I think that's what they're going to need to do here in the first half. You've got to take some pressure off of this young quarterback, and no better way to do it than to establish the running game early. They'll try and run for it on first and goal. And a minuscule gain of maybe a yard from the six to the five. And the ball smack dab on the five-yard line. Here's second and goal. Looking to throw. Jones. For the end zone, but that's going to wind up incomplete. It hasn't been a real good start to this game from a defensive perspective, but now after the incompletion on second down, things may be changing. If they can come up with one more play, they might be able to get out of it with just a field goal attempt. And he will push his way forward down to about the three-yard line. 
Give him a couple on the run there, and now they're in that in-between area here on fourth and goal. This is a long drive offensively. Wouldn't you hate to end this with just three points? Doesn't it feel like during a ball game you have certain narratives going on and there's certain drives that seem to take on just a bit more importance than others? This feels like one of those, doesn't it? To me, three points here, a major letdown. This is the time to go and put six on the board. So a long drive gets him down inside the five, but ultimately they settle for just the field goal. And I have to think that if maybe they were a yard closer, that would have made their decision tougher, and I think they likely would have gone for it. But in this situation, they just decided to take the three, and I think it was a smart move. The Steelers set to go on offense, and it is the big man, Big Ben, number seven, Ben Roethlisberger, ready to lead them. Big Ben and the Steelers with a first and 10 at their own 25-yard line. They'll try and start this drive in the air. That's complete to his tight end, Friar Muth. And he'll be upended at the 28-yard line. Just a three-yard gain there. Not a big window to throw. Coverage wasn't too bad there. Yeah, they had him under wraps pretty well, but somehow able to muscle his way open and catch the ball. A first carry for Najee Harris. Not much room here as he only gets it to about the 30. A one-yard gain there following the three-yard pickup on first down. I know the speed is the hallmark of today's NFL game, but the key to good rushing defense is still having your linebackers set the edge. Now it's Roethlisberger looking for Johnson, and it's intercepted. Picked off by Jerron Bentley, and he's going to return it to the 21-yard line. Offensively, when you see cover two, the thought has to go through the quarterback's head. Drive the football when making throws. It's not just the deep guys covering. It's the guys underneath you have to be careful of. Drive your throw. Otherwise, you see what results? Interceptions. Jones on first and 10. And caught by Henry. And he will lose yardage here back at the 23-yard line. He was unable to shake free there. They'll cover him for a loss of a yard. Second and 11. They hand this off to Harris. And he's got four down inside the 20 to the 18. You've got to give kudos to your offensive line and the guy carrying the ball because they were in a second and long situation. It seemed pretty dire, but they brought it back to third and manageable with that run. He's got his man. It's Kendrick Bourne. And the Patriots are going to have first and goal as they try to finish off this drive with six points. Now, after the completion, we're going to get a timeout, an injured player. While the trainers take a look, we'll step aside. up second and goal on any running play that's called they're always hoping that's going to break big and go the distance but when you get a nice game like that you're able to do so many things anyway you can come back and run essentially the same play again continue to move the ball on the ground or you can decide to throw the ball now because usually you have the defense back on its heels no gain on the play there they're going to need to come up with something better here on third and goal now they'd really like to make the short field pay off. We'll see if they can, but this is third and goal. And Jones is not going to have the first down as they stop him short. So call that no gain on the sneak, and now they're still a yard short here on fourth. Defense didn't budge on third down. Now what are we going to see on fourth? We are soon to find out, but does this feel like old school football or what? Oh, right? yeah. This is an old-fashioned goal line stand. I know what I would call on offense. I would go for it. I want some type of a play where my quarterback has a chance to run it or throw it. I don't just want one static play. So the turnover leads to points as they add three there. Yeah, what a sequence there and a nice one for them. They force the interception, put together a little drive, and then come away with three points. Nothing to it, partner. Just do it. The football will come out to the 25 as McLeod will not return it. 
Getting set to go again, Ben Roethlisberger marches onto the field. He'll look to shake off the interception on the opening drive. He should at least be comforted that it resulted in three, not six. And if I were him, I would be the guy all the way out on the field greeting my defense now, saying thanks a lot. You held him to a field goal after I turned it over. That's a big defensive stand for them. He needs to go out now and make up for what he did on the first drive. A terrific running there to start the drive as that's going to go for 15 and a quick first down as well. Usually we see runs like this as the defense breaks down later in the game, but this guy is setting the tone early, running through all types of tackles and putting the defense back on its heels. On first and ten, it's Roethlisberger. The throw for Claypool is intercepted. Picked up by J.C. Jackson. And he will not get all the way home, but he will take this back down to about the two-yard line. He had his eyes on the end zone. He got close. At least he set the offense up nicely, but he's probably mad he didn't take that one to pay dirt. I agree with you, and you know he's going to get teased because he didn't get it all the way into the end zone. But if they don't score now, if they don't get a touchdown, he won't just get teased. They'll be glaring at him. How'd you not score? Suddenly it's first and goal after the interception. A quick change in this. And he is in. Touchdown, New England. Taking it in from two yards out. And the Pats are able to strike quickly to add on to their lead. I wonder if he changed anything on his play sheet or they just executed better. Because they had two previous drives that ended in field goals before this one, they finally were able to put into the end zone. Well, whatever he did, speaking of the offensive coordinator, might be using that formula going forward. It worked there. Yeah, it worked very well. He and his field general in pretty good sync right now. They're starting to move the ball well. The football will come out to the 25 as McLeod will not return it. Getting set to go again, Ben Roethlisberger heading back out there. Bottom line, he's got to figure things out. He's completed three passes, but two of them have been to the wrong team so far. And when we talk about the best quarterbacks, we're usually talking... And Big Ben intercepted a third time. Devin McCourty picks it off, and he's going to return it to the 21-yard line. Three first-half interceptions now, and Charles, you'd have to think a fair amount of concern is developing over there on that sideline. And there should be, because essentially, he's been a little loose and possibly reckless with the football here in the first half. Now, maybe it's not all on him, but still, three interceptions, that puts the entire team in jeopardy. So the play caller from here on out, got to design some throws for him that he can complete, keep it away from the defense, and try and get him back on track. Here's Jones on first down. And this is caught at the eight. And stopped a few yards shy of the goal line at the three. And remember, this drive started off following the turnover. And they've taken no time working their way down the short field. A nice connection there. And now they're looking at a first and goal. They'll try and run with Harris. And he'll take it into the end zone for a Patriot touchdown. Damian Harris, a three-yard touchdown run. And the Patriots, they add on to their lead. But just power football there down near the goal line. Give it to him. He's able to push his way across. Yeah, they went heavy there. Sometimes you have those big offensive linemen come in, have to report like they're eligible. But all they're doing is getting a good stance, blocking, and getting their runner across the goal line. Extra point up and good by Folk. And that pushes the lead up to an even 20. Bailey now to kick it away after the touchdown. The football will come out to the 25 as McLeod will not return it. We focus our attention now on the quarterback, Ben Roethlisberger. The Pittsburgh offense at the line to start their next drive. And last time wasn't pretty. One play and an interception. We'll see if they can do better. I want to 
want to see if they want to go ahead and throw the ball again now on this drive after what happened on the last one. Throw it on the first play. Give the quarterback some confidence. See what happens. With his size, he's a tough man to bring down, but they do a nice job there stopping his progress and not allowing him to get back to the line of scrimmage. First play of the drive goes the wrong way. Here's second and 12. Roethlisberger on the draw, it's Harris. And this Patriot defense up to the challenge once more as they again stop him behind the line. Third down, now even tougher. Third and 13 after that loss of a yard. Now Roethlisberger. And here is a leaping catch, he pulled it in. And he'll go out near midfield at the 49. Well, these guys certainly need something good to go their way because this first quarter has been something of a disaster for them trying to move the ball. But that completion there maybe can get them focused and moving in the right direction. Ben's throw complete there to Smith-Schuster. And a good stiff arm and some space to run. And he goes down, but not before getting this inside the 25. And this has been a nice answer to the touchdown drive against them a few minutes ago because they've come out and reestablished the tempo. A nice throw there, and they're putting together a very strong drive as a response. Throwing now, Roethlisberger on first down. Ebron with it over the middle. Seven yards to pick up there. Nice rhythm throw there on first down. He located his tight end, made a nice, easy pitch and catch. Hoping he can break a tackle or two. Wasn't able to do that there, but still good yardage. And this throw a bit late as he couldn't reach back for it. Let's face it, if you want to get back into the game, these are the kind of throws you got to hit. He's wide open right there. You've got to be able to get it to him, don't you think? And those are the throws that haven't been available to them every time he's dropped a pass. Yeah, that's a big miss. at the 27-yard line. He's sacked. Christian Barmore drops him for a loss of 10, and it's going to be fourth and long. It's about how teams are so competitively matched, and you just want to make those plays that give you an advantage. How about right here? The difference between letting them score a touchdown versus holding them to a field goal? That's absolutely huge with the play he just made. And you know he hated taking the loss there on third down. Boswell's kick is good. And that will move the deficit from 20 down to 17. So the three points there, and CD, that helps him inch a bit closer. Yeah, better. When you're losing, any points you see go on the board in your favor, you're happy to take them. Taylor now from the end zone. And ultimately, he stopped right where he would have been if he had simply gone down to a knee at the 25. The Pats at the line, ready to go. And they're hoping to redo their efforts in the last drive when they got into the end zone. And just think of what it's like now on the sideline, because when you score a touchdown, you have to go over and look at the tablet and see what you did on the last drive. When you score points, it's a whole lot better view than when you're trying to figure out how to fix things there. Here's second and seven now from the 28. to his left. Jones hit and the ball's out. But I think the Patriots are going to hang on to the football. They do. They get it back. We always hear a lot of veterans on the defensive side of the football. They talk about smelling blood in the water, putting pressure on a rookie. They got to him there to force it free, but couldn't recover it. And you mentioned the pressure. Rookie quarterback, you're going to bring more pressure on him at all times because you don't know how he's going to hold up. He was fortunate there. Luck was on his side, able to recover that fumble. So here's a first and 10 at the 38. Now they'll switch it up here and look to throw. He'll rifle this one deep right side. Oh, a contested ball here, and it's going to be caught. A big play there for New England. Big plays are starting to become the trend here in this first half, and everything that they've tried has worked. And there's another example right there. 
So how about this for field position after the big play? Inside the 15 now as they come up on first and 10. On the give, this is Harris. And a pickup of about four down inside the 10 to the 8-yard line. Well, you talked about the need for them to establish the run early. They've been able to do that here in the first half. And that means that the whole offense has adopted that attitude and that persona. We're going to take care of this young man. And he's going to go down, sacked back at the 13-yard line. Cameron Hayward attacking off the edge that time. That's a step in the right direction defensively here because you're facing this sizable deficit. They're going to need more plays like that. A good sack, though, good effort there. And what you're hoping is, as you said, a step in the right direction, and that means it's something to build on. So you get the first one, and hopefully that can ignite them, and now they can make a few more plays and get back into this game. And Fultz's kick is good. And that will push this lead up to 20 now. So he's been a busy man here in this first half. That's three field goals for him now. And not just three field goals, but three for three. So even though the offense has struggled a bit putting it in the end zone, he's still been able to come away with points due to his leg. It is fielded right at the goal line. And he'll be brought down at the 28-yard line, so the decision to bring it out of the end zone gets him three more. The Steeler offense here about ready for their next drive. And tough to win games if you're going field goal, field goal, field goal here. They got field goal last time. Now they'll be looking for a touchdown. They're looking for the big chunk now because, as you noted, the field goal, field goal, field goal way of doing it makes it that much harder. It puts more pressure on every possession for you now. Go ahead and get six and feel a lot more comfortable about the position they're in. Bigger chunks. We'll see if they can get the score. So one play, and they're already just shy of midfield. A give to Harris. And he can only manage to get a couple. Second and eight coming up. Well, any lane that might have been open there was closed pretty quickly, and that was because the defensive front, they won that battle at the point of attack at the line of scrimmage. They used great leverage, held their spot, and stacked him up. Again, it's Harris on second down. And he is out of bounds inside the 35. Exactly what they needed right there because they needed to use the ground game to take some pressure off because the quarterback's been struggling a little bit. This offense finding its legs now. Here's another first and ten. Now a give here to Snell. And yeah, that play is blown up, losing yardage back at the 35. Now it looks like we've got a Patriot down, slow to get up. Second and 11 now. While the training staff works on him, we'll step aside and be right back. On second and 11 now, Roethlisberger, and his pass is intercepted for the fourth time today. Devin McCourty picks it off, and the Pats are going to take possession here at their own 16-yard line. Well, we heard all week that they were going to put the football in the air a lot. The problem is that is now four interceptions, Charles, that he has thrown in this first half. How do you treat a situation? What do you say to your quarterback right now? Boy, that's an interesting question because a lot of it depends on the head coach and the people making the decisions. You have to know your quarterback and know if he's mentally tough enough to have a chance to turn it around. Or is he a guy that maybe you've seen enough and it's time to go to the backup? But right now what you're rooting for is your defense to help keep you in the game to give him an opportunity to get back on track. And good yardage as he gets this one up to about the 23. It's a seven-yard carry to set them up with a second and three. Looking for Johnson, and it's intercepted. It's Devin Bush, the linebacker, who picks it. And he brings this one back. It's a pick six for a Steeler touchdown. Chris Boswell now for the extra point. It's up. It's true as they get back in it a bit here. It's now 23 to 10. So the defense creating some points, not only getting the interception, but then returning it to the end zone for the pick six. Taylor now from the end zone. And he'll be stopped right around where he would have been had he gone down to a knee, maybe a yard shy of there at the 24. The Pats at the line, ready to go. 
Now Jones throwing after the interception. That's going to be caught. It's Jacoby Myers. That catch good for only a couple. Second and eight coming up. Back to throw. Jones looks for White, but it's intercepted. Miles Kellebrew with a pick. And he brings this one back. It's a pick six for a Steeler touchdown. And on that one, with six defensive backs, did he need to be more careful throwing the football? I mean, I guess obviously hindsight he did, but... Yeah, hindsight, but even in foresight. When you got six defensive backs on the field, you just know you're going to get multiple coverages. You're never sure what you're going to see. But the biggest one is you don't have much reaction time for your receivers to go get the football because those guys, they're the best cover guys on the field. They go get it. And on that play, they took it the other way for six points. And he returns this to the 22. Damian Harris of the Patriot offense ready to take over again. And he's well on his way to a 100-yard game. He's already more than halfway there. We're only in the second quarter. And what I've always loved about running backs is they'll tell you, I had no idea how many yards I had. Right. Those guys have an innate <laughs> sense of where they are in a ball game and how many yards they've accumulated because you know they're always working towards 100. He's been working well towards 100 here. Throwing on second and eight. Jones, and he'll let this go deep for Bourne. A fight for it, and this is caught. It's caught indeed. A big play there for New England. Well, you don't have to be a genius to watch this game and figure out they've had plenty of success moving the football here in the first half. We've seen exhibits A, B, C, and right on down the line, haven't we? Yeah, we just saw exhibit Z right there. And yeah, he'll be brought down on the 30-yard line after a gain of six. That play wasn't quite as big as the play that preceded it, but still, got to like the way they're moving the football, partner. Absolutely. Pretty good room to run on that last play. Yeah, they didn't get a first down, but still, you'll take runs like that each and every time, won't you? Meanwhile, Jones throw into the hands of Henry here. And they're going to have themselves another first down as the tackle's made at the Steelers' 17-yard line. They'll run with Harris. And they're going to lose some on this play. Being knocked back to the 18. Officially, it's a one-yard loss. That's going to bring up second and 11. Looking to throw. Jones. Throw left side complete. That's Henry. And the Patriots are looking at first and goal as he's tackled all the way down at the two-yard line. Great mix of play calling so far. Three runs, three passes. All three passes have been completions. First and goal. I think on defense now, you have to almost take a chance. Rely on your scouting. Pick a play you think they would run here. And, and he's in. Touchdown, Patriots. A great play there with his second touchdown here in this first half. And the Patriots add on to their lead. And make it now a pair of touchdowns for the big man out of the backfield. I'm not sure this was in the game plan, but boy, it's working to perfection. And I know one person has a big grin on his face now. And that's that big guy has found his way into the end zone twice in this game. Full connects on the extra point. And the lead now stands at 13. Bailey now to kick it away after the touchdown. Returning from his end zone is Ray Ray McLeod. And they'll get him down right at the 25-yard line, so the same result had he opted for the touchback. Big Ben and the Steelers with a first and 10 at their 25-yard line. A handoff to Harris to begin the drive. And not a whole lot of room to operate there on the first down run. He gets maybe three. Well, it's time for them to be good teammates right here. And what I mean by that is possess the ball for a little while. Get at least two first downs. Give their defense a chance to settle down a little bit after they give up a touchdown. From the 27, Roethlisberger. And down he goes, but he takes it up to the 40. You can see the time and effort and thought that they put into their passing game because it was evident right there. It looks like a simple pitch and catch. 
but you and I both know that they have planned for this and worked hard to make it happen. Roethlisberger going to get that to Ebron. And he gets this one to midfield before he's brought down. From midfield now, here's Roethlisberger. Throw left side, complete to Smith-Schuster. And he's out of bounds as he gets this down to the 45. People worry about throwing the out route because often it can get jumped, and that can turn to an either an incompletion or an interception. But not on that one. Everything came together, and he catches it and goes over the sideline. On second down, it's Harris. And he's corralled, but not before getting it inside the 35. Now the Patriots going to use one of their timeouts. They'll have two remaining as we step aside here in this second quarter. From the 34 now, here's first and 10. This is Harris. Works his way inside the 30 on a pickup of four. Two minutes remaining in this first half of football. Here we go, here we go. A reminder coming up here at halftime. We'll ship you off to Orlando. Jonathan Coachman will have first half highlights and analysis from a back and forth first half that we've seen. And that one going to be off target and incomplete. Seventh play of the drive upcoming here on third and six. Johnson was the intended receiver and it's third down. It's a Patriot sack. Kyle Van Noy drops it for a loss of 14 yards, and it also brings up fourth down. So on trots the field goal unit, and wow, this is going to be a challenge here. They spot it on the midfield stripe, so it is a 60-yard attempt here. A sensational effort from that distance, but rejected by the bar. And this score will stay right where it is. All things considered, a pretty good kick. Just cruel punishment there to be denied by the crossbar. If you're going to hit from that distance, sometimes you're going to need a little luck. And unfortunately for him, this time the break goes against him. And that is incomplete. He couldn't hold on through the contact. Brings up second down. My first thought is surprise because that's one of the better tight ends around, and I've seen him pull in balls like this before. But how about a little credit to the defense forcing that incompletion? Throwing again on second and ten. Jones. And an incomplete pass. That'll stop the clock here with just under a minute to play in half number one. So back-to-back -back incompletions, and that has him staring at a third and ten. Off the play fake. Jones under a heavy rush, and down he goes. Now the Steelers use the first of their three timeouts as they get the stoppage with a little over 50 seconds to go in the first half. And how about this? Fourth and long, and they're going to go for it. They're indeed going for it as they look to throw. But he'll let this go deep for Bourne. And that went a little too high as it's knocked away and incomplete. A surprising move to go for it predictably at least somewhat predictably it doesn't pay off and the Steelers they're going to take over an excellent field position a little juke and he takes this just a few yards shy of the red zone before going out well, that was a beautifully executed screen pass they let the rushers get upfield and get the escorts in front meaning the offensive linemen other blockers out in front completed the pass beautifully so now you've got all that open space with big guys leading the way now Roethlisberger on first down open man that's the tight end fire move the Steelers signal for the second of their timeouts.
as they stop it here with just under 40 ticks to go in this first half. First and goal, and they got to be thinking a chance to get right back into this football game. Here's Roethlisberger. Toward the pylon, caught. Touchdown. Ben Roethlisberger with a touchdown pass to Juju Smith-Schuster. And the Steelers get a late score here in the final minute of the first half. Boswell good with the extra point. And the lead will shrink to six. field position two plays later Pater this taken in at the goal line and he won't quite make it to the 25 the Pats at the line ready to go and the clock reads 30 seconds to go so really not a whole lot of time to speak of he's gonna let it go again and that will be incomplete would have been a big hitter if they had connected. Instead, it's second down. To throw on second and ten. Jones. Open man, the tight end, Henry. And he takes this up to the 40-yard line before being corralled. The Patriots will take their third and final timeout as they'll stop it with 17 seconds to go in this first half of action. Jones now throwing on first down. And he'll let this go deep for Bourne. And this one is going to be off the mark, too far out in front. I think he's got to be careful not to force anything into coverage right there. There weren't really any throwing lanes, but the best part for him, he's got second and third down to fall back on. Escaping the pressure right. And they'll get this well past midfield before being stopped just before the 35. So we've reached halftime in a wild first half. We'll take a minute to catch our breath as we send you down to Orlando where Jonathan Coachman had an abbreviated halftime show as we get rolling to quarter three. It's been a shootout so far. We'll see which defense can make the adjustments as we get back underway in the second half. The football will come out to the 25 as McLeod will not return it. Here comes Ben Roethlisberger and the Steeler offense back onto the field. Any surprise in your mind he's out there to start the second half after four first-half interceptions? He's to be surprised by a lot of things, partner, but in this case I'm not because you know they want him to be their guy. And the only way to truly establish that is to give him a chance to work through some of the issues he had in the first half. They'll start the drive with Harris. And he'll go down at the 26, following a gain of six. Well, I think after that run, the defense is getting back in the huddle and looking at each other and maybe starting to question their confidence a bit. They gave up a significant run, six yards, and now you're saying to yourself, how do we stop them, and do I have enough confidence to make a play? And he gets this one just shy of the 40, down at the 39. This offensive game plan has just been sensational. I mean, when you think about all the different ways they've gotten their receivers open so far, it's really been impressive. Scheme, design, execution. On first down, Harris. 77 yards for him on the ground now as he has been terrific here this afternoon. Now, Brandon, that's the way you want to run the football. There should almost be quote bubbles above the offense right now. Bam, boom, biff. That's how they feel good about moving the football. 
Harris going to get it again on second down. And he'll be taken down just shy of midfield after a gain of about four. Well, you certainly have to give a little credit here because they're playing this game now at their pace. This is ball control football, sustained runs, taking their time, and making it work. And he has the first down yardage before they bring him down right at the 45. Third and inches, just turn around, hand it to the big guy and let him plow forward and pick up a first down. A lot of people think that the offensive line, they may almost take the play off because they got a big guy back there pushing forward. I think it actually works in reverse. I think they block harder because they love seeing that guy get the ball because he doesn't touch it very often. Operating out of Steeler territory now. Here's first and 10 at the 45-yard line. Back to throw. Jones. And this will be incomplete. Physical play on the football there, and it's second down. Here's second and 10. Here's Harris. Oh, now Harris lost it. It's a fumble, and it's picked up by the Steelers. And they have possession. And they have it at the 38-yard line. So turnovers, Charles, you figure, will be key. And now before the ball changes hands, they're going to take a look at this just to make sure that they have it right. Now the question, was the knee in fact down before this ball comes loose? And is the video convincing enough to overturn it? A lot of factors here. Remember, you also need to So that one overturned. They say the knee was down, and that will not be ruled a fumble. He completes it to Henry. And he will have a Patriots first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. They brought in a heavy set on third down, and that usually means running play. But we have seen them throw out of that formation. And sure enough, they snuck the tight end out on that one, wound up hitting him for a first down. And he's going to lose yardage and be backed up to 25. They'll lose a yard there, and it's second and 11. I'll tell you what, this defense hasn't played its best, but they're still right in this football game. And if they keep making plays just like that, they're going to give their offense a chance. Looking at a second and 11 now after the loss. Looking to throw. Jones. This one to Bourne, and he's got it. And they're going to have themselves another first down as the tackle's made at the Steelers' 12-yard line. I'll tell you what, a lot of those mid-range throws have been available because sometimes teams get too concerned about the deep ball and they leave too much space in front of them. And these guys have been taking advantage so far. From down at the 12, it's first and 10. They'll try the right side with Harris. And he's going to work this one down to about the five. A solid run on first down. Gain of seven leaves him with a second and three. And there we saw one of the downsides of blitzing during a rundown because sometimes you get out of your gaps. You don't fit the run quite as well because you're headed towards the ball carrier with abandon. Again, it's Harris on second down. And not a whole lot there. He does get a couple, taking it from the five down to the three. The good run on first down, followed up by a not-so-good run on second down. Now let's find out they're going to stick with the run here on third down. A lot of people would love to see some... And he'll take it into the end zone for a Patriot touchdown. A three-yard touchdown run. And the Patriots add six to their lead. That seemed pretty ideal there for the offense, Charles. You take a little bit of time off the clock here in the third quarter, decent length drive, and you pad your lead as well at the end of it. And what it does is lets you feel like you're in control of this game even more so than a two-touchdown lead, right? Because you have taken that time off, as you noted, which means they couldn't get you off the field. You ran your playbook the way you wanted to, and you gave your defense some rest. What a big-time drive in that situation. Bailey now to kick it away after the touchdown. The football will come out to the 25 as McLeod will not return it. The Steelers offense now, they get ready to head back on the field and hoping to do better than they did their last possession when they punted the football. Appeal to the vanity of your offensive line. Tell them that they control your fate. 
leverage guys, win the line of scrimmage. If you do that, you start to win first down. You win second down. And guess what? You start accumulating first downs, and that's what they need in order to not punt the ball again. A loss of a yard there to start out. That leads to a second and 11. Here's Roethlisberger. He'll find Smith-Schuster. That's complete. And he's taken down, but able to slip across the 35. Well, they obviously read man coverage there, partner, and he got downfield, broke down the defender, made him what do you think. Mean by that, Burke? Yeah, he made him think he was going to run a different route. Probably thought he was going to take it upfield. Then he curls back inside for the completion. Room to run past midfield. The 30, 20, 10. And to the end zone. Touchdown, Pittsburgh. Najee Harris. 63 yards, and the Steelers are able to make this a close game again. Extra point put through by Boswell, and the lead will shrink to six. Boswell now to kick it away after the touchdown. On the return is J.J. Taylor. And he'll go down as this drive will start at the 25-yard line. The Pats at the line ready to go. Pretty important third quarter drive for them. Momentum has sort of shifted the other direction after that last touchdown as they nurse this small lead. Five yards is the tally on first down. That brings up second and five. They run again with Harris. He takes this from the 30 to the 34. When you find that kind of yardage, you couldn't be more confident as a ball carrier. And guess what? You're going to go back and tell your offensive coordinator, I'd like to keep carrying it, thank you. Now a run with a fullback, Johnson. And he's got the first down yardage before he's brought down at the 42. On third and one, it seems natural to just turn and hand it to the biggest guy you have in the backfield. But usually, he's not the primary runner. So for the defense, they're often keying on the running back because he's the guy who gets the ball more often, and the fullback is the blocker. When he ends up carrying the football, that's a heck of a tendency breaker. And now you're just trying to jump on his back and hold on. A good run got seven on first. Here's second and three. Now here's another carry for Harris. And for one of the few times here today, this run's not going to go anywhere. He got maybe a half yard at most, but officially they'll be left with a third and two. He's having a big game run in the football, but that will hurt the yards per carry a little bit. Yeah, but the average he's got so far, that's the type of average he wants to take with him to contract negotiations, doesn't he? Yeah, he'll be out just a yard or two shy of the 30. Looks to me, partner, like he's learned a little bit because earlier in the game, I think he was trying to force a lot of throws into some windows that just weren't open. Yeah, the interceptions had plagued him, especially a second interception, really a bad throw. So maybe a better decision there. Yeah, no doubt about it. I think he learned from earlier in the game, and he's applying it now. Working his way for a gain of seven to the 26. Looks to me like maybe there's a little attrition setting in with this drive. Because when you see that type of a run, I get the feeling the defense gets a little bit tired. And that's the last thing they need, especially when they look up at the scoreboard. All in all, no gain on the play, and it'll bring up third. Well, there was pressure all around him, so the only play was to try and get out of there. I think it was an excellent effort by him just to get back to the line of scrimmage. Trying to pick it up on the ground with Harris. And down inside the 15, shy of the 10. 126 yards rushing for him now as his sensational afternoon continues. All runs on this drive so far. It's first and 10. On the ground, it's Harris. And they'll get him down after a pickup of eight, second and two. for this third quarter of action. We'll return with more after this. This is the NFL, and it's on EA Sports. On second and a couple, Jones. He gets it left side to Johnson. 
And this will result in him losing yardage back to the three. They call it a loss of a yard there. And that'll make it third down. I think they tried to fool him on that one. You know, being able to throw the ball to the fullback position, no one was fooled on that play. No, lost yardage, you think that? And he's over the line and into the end zone for a Patriot score. Damian Harris, his second touchdown of the afternoon. And the Patriots, they add on to their lead. On third down and short and everything well executed, he not only gets the first down, Charles, he gets the touchdown as well. And you see the defense commit to the run so often in these situations. There's always that little bit of hesitancy, isn't there, partner? Thinking that they may play action yet. They took advantage of that hesitancy and found their way into the end zone with a running play. Extra point up and good by Folk. And the lead now stands at 13. So that drive, 12 plays in length. And it was Damian Harris who finished things off with a touchdown run. Bailey now to kick it away after the touchdown. Here's McLeod from his end zone. And he'll be stopped right around where he would have been had he gone down to a knee, maybe a yard shy of there at the 24. Turn to Harris to begin the drive. And he is brought down at the 22 after a gain of two. And it brings up second down. The last run good for two. Here's second and eight. Back to throw. Jones. And intercepted. Maybe the turning point they need. Picked up by the linebacker, Joe Schobert. And they will take over at the 26-yard line. So wipe out the INT roughing the passer. What a disaster. An absolute disaster. And you hope their lockers are not right next to each other <laughs> for the post game. Safe to say one is not buying the other dinner. And a five-yard gain gets him to the 42. After the pickup of five, here's second and five. They stay on the ground. Again, it's Harris. And three yards there takes him to the 45. Brandon, I've got to think this offensive line has got some smiles on its faces. And, and I know it sounds crazy, but they practiced for this back in training camp. They knew they'd be in situations where it'd be extra defenders in the box coming after them, trying to keep them from locking down a game. Right now, they want to show the world they're up to the challenge. They had enough yards for the first down, but a clutch hit right there defensively. Jars it free. No first down. They'll try and run with a fullback, Johnson. And he's got the first down yardage before being taken down at midfield. And yes, everyone, that was the fullback carrying the football. I know it's a dying breed. It's a dying position for a lot of people. But I still think it's valuable and important, especially one who can carry the ball. And you need short yardage. What makes sense? Go to a big body. Let him plow forward just like he did there. It's still a big man's game. This will be stopped about two yards shy of the marker. Eight-yard gain, second and two. Well, he's proven real effective running the football. No one open, don't force it. Just get what you can, and that's what he's done very well in this game. Second and two. Oh, design run for their wide out. Anytime the offense shows what they call a shot play or a chunk play where they're trying to get big yardage, sometimes people just call it gadget plays, and you hold it to a gain that we just saw there, you feel pretty good about yourself as a defense. Now a pass here caught by Hunter Henry. And inside the 20 before he's brought down. Another nice pickup through the air, and I think a lot of people might expect him to run the ball in this situation, Brandon, but with this lead, they're electing to throw the football. Swings, slants, quick outs, things that they consider safe. Now a first down carry for Harris, and he'll get him inside the 15 down to the 14-yard line. 
153 yards rushing for him now as he has been tremendous all day long. Working with a second and four. They'll run again with Harris. And he's able to work it here to the eight-yard line. Well, that's a carry they have to be satisfied with. And throughout this game, they've been satisfied with what he's given them. Whenever they've needed a big run, a first down, he's the guy they've turned to. And it doesn't matter what the defense thinks. They feel like they've got the confidence to keep handing it to him and keep picking up good yardage. And that's going to be incomplete. Too tough to hold on to that one. It's second down. Nothing on first down, so the ball remains at the eight-yard line, second and goal. They hand this off to Harris. They'll get this halfway home from the eight to the four on a gain of four. A lot of tired bodies on that field, but this is a big play, third and goal. Off play action, Jones to the end zone, but it's incomplete. So it's been a long drive. They've held the ball for quite a while. Now what do you do here? Well, to me, at this stage after this drive, this close to the goal line, three points would be a letdown. I'm going for it. So all things considered, that's not the final nail, but it does make things exceedingly difficult now on the other side. Yeah, because obviously now with a 16-point game, the other guys don't need just two touchdowns. They need a couple of two-point conversions as well. Plus, they'll need either a turnover or an onside kick in there somewhere. So you're just adding to the list of things that need to happen in sequence. And it's going to be a pretty tall order this late in the game. The Pittsburgh offense at the line to start their next drive. On first down, it's Roethlisberger. He finds his man, Johnson. They'll be dropped after a gain of about six across the 30 to the 31. They'll come up now second and four from the 31. Now it's Roethlisberger. The Pats are going to get there. Down he goes. Christian Barmore picks up his second sack of the afternoon. It has been a rough afternoon for him trying to get rid of the football. See, that's now five sacks. How'd you like to be the offensive coordinator, the offensive line coach trying to come up with an answer for this pass rush? What blocking assignments do you change? Can guys play a little bit better? And we're seeing the end result on the scoreboard. Long day in the pocket for their quarterback. And past the 40 before he's out of bounds. Fourth quarter, every drive's so critical, and you figure they only get one more shot after this, so a touchdown's imperative on this drive. It is, but you also have to think to yourself in play calling, don't hold anything back. Don't save it for the second touchdown. You got the first one for the second one to even matter. And he goes out of bounds. It looks like right at the 50. A good pick up there. Eight yards on the first down completion. From the midfield stripe, they'll look to throw. Right side, Claypool's got it. And he'll go down inside the 45 before going out of bounds. Throwing again, it's Roethlisberger. Looking middle, and it's incomplete. Juju Smith-Schuster, the intended receiver that time. And that'll bring up second down. Here's Roethlisberger to throw. A hit as he throws there, incomplete. We've seen this quite a few times in this game. Offensive line unable to keep leverage, unable to keep people away, facing a lot of pressure. Fortunate, fortunate just to get rid of it. One of the reasons they're down is that inability, though, to stop the pressure. We saw another example of it there. And this pass broken up. Now the contact well timed there, and now fourth down. Here we go. It's Roethlisberger on fourth down. And it's incomplete. They cannot convert, and they turn it over. The Steelers try it, but they come up empty on fourth down. And the Patriots' defense is going to take over on down. So they really needed points here in a two-score game. Could not come away with anything there on fourth. And while we know they're a little bit discouraged here, they can't check out of this game. You and I have called a good number of games over the course of our career where we've seen these types of situations. Teams get the ball back, and that miracle does.
does occur. So they can't let that dream go just yet. They have to get stout on defense here. Yeah, right now, really hoping for a turnover. On second down now, it's Harris. And he'll be brought down at the 45-yard line. Well, I don't think there's any question, Brandon, at this stage, the stop troops, the defensive guys, they've got to use their three timeouts here. They've got to stop them and get the ball back. Yeah, if you're in that two to three score deficit window that they're in now, you got to get it ASAP. Yeah, no doubt about it. Stop them, use your timeouts. Easier to move the ball on offense without timeouts than to stop them on defense without using them. The last run got six, now second and four. They'll try and run some clock here as they keep it on the ground. And they'll be inside the 35 now at the 34-yard line. 178 yards rushing for him now in the afternoon as he continues to put a hurt on this defense. Two minutes left to play in this football game here on EA Sports. So the Patriots with the football as we get you reset. And you'd have to figure they're just looking to burn these final two minutes away and get out of here with a victory. And he'll take this ahead for about four. Second down coming up. And now right out of the two-minute break, we'll get a timeout used defensively with a minute 56 to go. Following the pickup of four, here's second and six. They run once more with Stevenson. Whistles now at a timeout. So defensively, they burn it here with 151 left. They'll try and run for the first with Stevenson. Uh -oh, he is going nowhere as he is enveloped behind the line. Now the Steelers going to use their third and final timeout as they'll head to the sideline and talk over what to do next. Folks, kick is good. And that will make this now a 19-point advantage. So that, not just important in the fact that it widens their lead, but really that was a textbook job of just hanging on to the football. And we know all the time that coaches talk about time of possession. Sometimes it's a stat that doesn't matter much, but in this drive, it matters a lot. They want to reduce time and score points and lock this game down. The Steeler offense here about ready for their next drive. They're down big here late. I don't know. You just one last drive here for pride. Some people like to do that. I remember playing for a guy once we were down huge. And someone said, well, this is taken in. It's complete. And able to rip off a big chunk of yard before being dropped inside the 40. A big play that time through the air. 37 yards. That incompletion is not a surprise with the way that this one has gone and the frustration of body language is evident everywhere. This team, they've really been put through the ringer in this one. And he goes down. It's a Patriot sack. Now they got to get to the line quickly. Now on third and long, they'll look to throw. Going top shelf for Smith-Schuster. And now here is another interception. Picked off by Adrian Phillips. And the Patriots force the turnover. They'll take over at their own 27. But with the points that we've seen scored, neither defense has been at their best. But these guys, they've been a little bit better, Charles, and a nice interception there. Yeah, you're right about that, Brandon. Let's face it. It's not always how you start, it's how you finish, right? So maybe you have a rough game all the way along, but if you make a big play like that at the right time, it can make everything turn out just okay. Down to a knee goes Jones, and that should just about seal it. Yeah, it's fun to kneel down in front of your home crowd, but when you go on the road, that band of brothers attitude, right? Just us against the world and get it done. <laughs> How happy are they? I remember a coach at a previous stop telling me, you get a win on the road, doesn't matter the opponent, get out of there like you stole something. And they, <laughs> they did in this one.
Well, Charles, it's one thing to win. It's another thing to win and put up the amount of points that they did. Boy, were they clicking on offense. They can't help but feel great about themselves, can they? I mean, what a game to put up that number of points, continually feeling like they're moving the ball and things are working and clicking. They think that they can bottle this and carry it with them. And as an offensive coordinator, you just don't think you can do anything wrong. Whatever you call, run, pass, it's all going to work. That's called being in the zone. So that'll do it for my partner, Charles Davis, and the best darn crew in the industry. I'm Brandon Gauden. This has been a presentation of the NFL on EA Sports. With that, we sign off from Heinz Field.